if you're not in a calorie deficit, if you're not burning more calories than you're consuming on average, you won't lose weight. Welcome back to the Case by Case Training Podcast. My name is Ben Case, and this is episode five of the podcast. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about calories. We're going to be talking um, about what the importance of calories is when it comes to weight loss, specifically how important they are. We're going to be talking about macronutrients, what those are, and the part that they play, and all things related to calories today, specifically. And so we're getting a little more into the practicality of how things work and how you're going to actually start implementing steps to reaching your goals and starting to see some results. So hopefully you've already watched the first four episodes where we've talked a lot about mindset and really uh, overcoming some of the different false information that's out there in order to start getting yourself prepared to begin seeing results. And so uh, one thing I do want to mention is, you know, there's obviously in our culture, one of the issues, and this is something I've talked about in some of the previous episodes, there's this desire for instant results. There's this desire for uh, an instant solution. And I get that. It, it sounds nice. And, you know, maybe the idea of listening to a bunch of episodes of a podcast to slowly start implementing, you know, what I'm teaching you and slowly start seeing results over time doesn't sound as appealing as, you know, some quick fix, something I can just buy right now and get get the uh, results immediately or a uh, diet I can go on for, you know, a few weeks and get the results super fast. That stuff all sounds good, but again, it, it's part of the problem. It's part of the problem that exists and why people aren't staying in shape, why people are maybe losing lots of weight fast, but then not keeping it off. And so we're really focusing here on a healthy lifestyle. And there's a lot of information. There's a lot of um, tools. There's a lot of information I can give you. There's a lot of knowledge, a lot of misinformation to also combat and overcome. And so, you know, I, I can't do that all in one video. It's part of the reason I wanted to start the podcast because I feel like it enables me to spend the appropriate time on each subject and we can go through piece by piece putting this all together. And so hopefully you'll continue to follow along and I, I promise it's going to continue to get even more and more practical as we go, more exact steps you can implement. And, you know, when I train my clients, a lot of what I'm giving you here is what I'm doing with them. And it's over even a longer period of time sometimes because we're having this you know, ongoing communication where they're asking me questions and I'm continually teaching them more information, helping them, giving them the tools to set them up for long-term success, not just quick fix results that don't last long-term. Now, one of the things that obviously we do need to do is start seeing results. If I have people paying me and they are not getting results for several weeks or months and I keep saying, oh, just be patient, just be patient, um, you know, that's going to be hard. That's going to be tough for people to trust that this really works. And so we do need still to start implementing things, start seeing some results. And I get that the same is going to be true here. You know, if you're, you're four episodes in, you want some practical steps to follow to start seeing some change and seeing some results. And so we're going to talk about that today. And one of the biggest things and one of the first things that I do with my clients is help them with their calories and figuring out what exact calories do you need to consume each day in order to lose weight and in order to lose the weight that they want to lose that lines up with their goals, that lines up with a realistic timeline that is maintainable and figuring out what that looks like and, and figuring out, okay, how can we come to a conclusion of or uh, come to a balanced um, goal of it's not going to be so restrictive to where it's very similar to a lot of the cookie cutter diets that are out there where sure we might be able to get a lot of results really quick but then it's not going to be maintainable long term how do we how do we make it where it's still getting results but still reasonable something that can fit with your lifestyle making as little huge changes as possible we want we want small changes that can make a big difference not big drastic changes that will not last and 
also thinking through, okay, what, what other things can we add in to the equation to make the dieting side of things easier? Because the reality is, and you've probably heard this, the diet is just a huge portion of the equation. And I, I think the exercise is extremely important. It has many health benefits outside of just simply trying to lose weight or put on muscle. Lots of great things come from being active and exercising. And you can be unhealthy and be skinny. I mean, that's the reality. But at the end of the day, you can also exercise all you want and continue to put on weight and be overweight, which many of you experienced. And it's frustrating because you're putting in this hard work, you're in the gym, you're exercising, you're doing the work, and yet you're not seeing results. And that's because the nutrition really is a huge part of the equation. And so if you're not getting that right, everything else is going to fall apart or not seem to be working. And so, you know, we have to kind of figure out what things are top priority, what things are the most important things for getting results. And sure, we might be able to go, okay, if, if you're not so keen on the nutrition side of things, maybe we can increase the exercise a little bit more so that it's easier on the nutrition side. If you're better on the nutrition side, maybe you don't have to do quite as much on the exercise side and, and you can do a little lighter program there if that's not something you're as uh, into. And so it's figuring out, it's a balance of what things can I do to get the results that I am trying to get in a reasonable time frame that's maintainable. So obviously not things that I'm going to dread and going to hate, ideally, and figuring out what does that look like for me? How do we put piece this all together into a program for you that is going to work with your life and is going to be something that you can handle and you can do and stick with long term? And there's lots of other things too. There's lots of different things we can do to increase metabolism. There's lots of different things we can do to increase your energy burn and all these things. But, and there's different tactics for how do we restrict the calories to make sure I'm hitting this number. It's not just a, a one solution for everybody. Everybody's going to be a little different on what works for them. And so that's really my goal is to help you start to see, okay, this is how this works. And now figure out, well, what's going to work for me ideally and be the best thing that I'm going to be able to stick with. And I think the biggest thing for a lot of people where they right off the bat go wrong is regardless, even if you get to that point where you go, okay, maybe a one size fits all is not the best thing. Maybe I need something that is more tailored to me. I need to think through what you know, once you have the knowledge and the information of what things you can do, what the possibilities are, and how you can combine a workout program you enjoy, working out the amount of days that you can handle, and then eating foods that you still enjoy, but eating them in a moderate amount and knowing, okay, this is how much I can afford of this and this. Once we get all that together, that's all great if you have the knowledge, but then you have to implement. And in order to implement, there needs to be either some some form of accountability, some some form of a program to, you know, for some people, they need to be able to check a box that I completed this today. Um, maybe for some people, they need someone really just breathing down their neck, telling them like, hey, did you do this today? And keeping that accountability. Regardless, that's part of the equation for what's going to work for you is you need to know yourself. You need to know, am I somebody who simply having the information is going to be enough? Or do I need a personal trainer? Do I need an in-person trainer? Do I need an online program? Is that going to work better for me? Do I need something where someone is in constant communication with me? Do I, you know, what is it that you need in order to help you actually implement these things? And so it's important to keep in mind as we go through all this, it's not going to simply be enough just to have the information. So I don't want you to think that you know, I'm giving you all this info. I'm trying to help you see the light and then that's it. And there's, you know, it's just going to happen through osmosis. You still need to also think through as part of your unique person and how you're going to maintain results long term. What does that look like? And that, that means considering every part of the equation. And so, you know, you've got to think through this a little bit. And again, I, I know it's it might not sound super appealing. Maybe it's way more appealing to just say, 
okay, somebody just do all this for me. I don't want to think through this. I don't want to have to, you know, come up with all this. Hey, there's options for that. And I do customized coaching where that's exactly what I do. I, I work with my clients to figure out what do they want? What's it need to look like? And then I put it all together for them. And then they can just check the box and do it each day. Some people need that. And that's, and that's fine. Maybe you don't. Maybe you are somebody who needs the information. You need the right steps. And then you can implement them yourself. So everybody's going to be different on that. And again, that's just, that's just something to consider as we go along. Now, um, there is going to be some work involved regardless. You know, the work of listening to these podcasts, it takes some time. It's not hard work, but it takes time to figure out what you need to do. And then actually, when I tell you this is how you need to do this, or this is what you need to do in order to start doing these things, I'm not prescribing a one-size-fits-all. It's exactly what I'm against. And so that's going to involve, again, unless you're doing customized coaching, that's going to involve on your part somewhat implementing and figuring out, okay, what things will work for me. So what I'm trying to do right now is help you see the options help you see what could potentially work for you, figuring out a combination of things that could work for you. And it might open your eyes a little bit too, to how, um, I don't want to say simple, but how much easier it can look starting out than a lot of times we think. Because again, the extreme diets, the extreme workout program, all the extreme, extreme, extreme that's out there, that's not tailored to you, and they have to make it extreme because they need to get results in order to be able to sell the product. And so they need to make sure that everybody who buys this cookie cutter plan is going to get results. So I'm going to make it so restrictive and so extreme that everyone's going to see results from it. And that seems great. But what about the nutrients you're lacking? What about the long term maintainability? What about the, uh, you know, <laughs> the misery <laughs> while you're doing it? All the things that are the downsides. They're important to consider. And so um, when you start to actually understand, oh, okay, for me, I don't need to be in that big of a calorie deficit in order to lose enough weight to reach my goal. I can lose this much weight and this much time and all I have to do is this or I only have to exercise two days a week or three days a week. I thought I had to exercise seven, every day of the week or six days a week. And so that's important to understand because once you see, oh, for me, I can do this and I hate running. I don't have to run. I, I hate this and I don't have, oh, I could do it this way and do this thing instead of that thing. And that's going to burn the same amount of calories. Good to know. That's going to be more maintainable long term. I'm going to be able to stick with this. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So it's not about necessarily give me the easy one size fits all. I can, I can click a button and get started on this tomorrow. Yeah, that sounds nice, but what's going to be quicker to getting the results you want, what's going to actually be the fast track is going to be putting in a little bit more effort. Now, listen to these podcasts as we go, get the information, start kind of slowly implementing some of the steps. And while, sure, it may seem slow at first, you're going to start seeing results, especially after podcasts like the one we're doing today, where we're going to get into some of the things that produce the results. And then you're going to stick with it because you can actually maintain it. And six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, you're going to be a lot further along than yo-yoing doing 30-day extreme diets. And so while the 30 days seems quick, and that's like, oh, that's the fast, easy way. Well, not really. Because what, what what does it look like two years from now? Where are you at then? Was it really quicker? Or was the slow and steady, constant progress the quicker route? So let's get into it then. <laughs> I know I, I've, I've really uh, built this up and, and I, I just want to be sure to explain these things because I, again, I think it is part of the issue that does exist that I'm trying to help overcome is the mentality of the consumer you that we we're part of the problem a little bit when we want the fast result we 
we kind of the the marketing the people who are marketing the products and the solutions and the weight loss they're just simply marketing what they know the customer wants whether or not it's a good product whether or not it's going to give long-term results whether or not it's going to really meet all of the desires that the person really has maybe they don't define it clearly enough that oh yeah i wanted something that was actually going to last for a long time not just like a 30-day fix but we we create part of the issue by what we expect out of things and what we desire and not thinking fully through what's actually going to be best for me in the long term what's going to last and stick and, and really help change my life and so the first thing that I do with my clients starting out is, like I said, I, I help them understand their calorie needs. And so um, I'm not going to, in this episode, tell you exactly this is your calorie needs or this is how you figure your calorie needs out. We're going to talk about that in the next episode. And so it's going to get even more clear and more specific. But first, before we get to you figuring out exactly what your daily calorie needs are, we need to kind of understand how this all works in the first place. And so the reality is there's only one way to lose weight. And, and you need to remember this. It's not a specific product. There's not a specific solution. It's not running. It's not walking. It's not weightlifting. It's not a certain diet. It's not keto. It's not paleo. It's not any of those things. It's being in a calorie deficit, meaning consuming less calories each day, than you burn. And this is important to understand because if you're not in a calorie deficit, if you're not burning more calories than you're consuming on average, you won't lose weight. No matter what you're doing, no matter what diet you're on, no matter what workout you're doing, no matter what it is, you will not lose weight. Now you could drop some water weight. You're not having as much sodium in your diet. You could drop, um, you know, some, uh, maybe some initial weight from a drastic change in a diet, even while not in a a calorie deficit, but I'm talking about long-term ongoing lasting results. We're not talking about, you know, some unique incident that isn't going to stick long-term. If you're not in a calorie deficit over time on average, you're not going to burn and lose fat and keep it off. So this is important to understand. Also, obviously, on the flip side, if you're in a calorie surplus over time, on average, you're going to put on weight. And, you know, that could that could happen even while you're, like we said, exercising. That could happen even while you're on some strict, rigid diet. And so these are important things to understand. Now, what is a calorie exactly? And, you know, what, what are... The macronutrients, does it really matter what amount of each you get? Um, You know, we could get into all the nutrition specific side of things. But today we're just going to talk about kind of terms and what things are and helping you understand because it does help you make informed decisions when you understand how things work. So a calorie essentially for, you know, keeping it simple, it's just energy. It's 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 a form of energy energy, a measurement of energy, I should say. And so your body uses calories for energy. And if you're expending, and this is why this this is how this equation works. If you're expending a certain amount of energy and then you're getting more calories than you're expending energy wise, you're going to put on weight because that energy is going to be stored energy doesn't just disappear, right? Now, as far as the macronutrients go, what are what are the different calories made up of? Well, they're made up of proteins, fats, and carbs. And I'm sure you know this, but we're going to talk a little bit about each of them really quick just to give you some more understanding. So a protein, let's start there. Protein, when you eat it, your body is metabolizing whatever you eat. So when you eat a protein, fat, or carb, your body's going to metabolize it, break it down, and the proteins are broken down into amino acids, which are the building blocks of building muscle and really building your body. You know, bone, muscle, 
and many other things. They, they create other proteins as well. So proteins are extremely important. Now, if there's not enough fats or enough carbs present, your body will ultimately also use proteins for energy. So your body's going to, it needs energy regardless. It needs to function. That's how it, that's how you live and function. You use energy every day. Even when you're sleeping, you're using energy. And so your body will adapt and it's going to use what it needs or, you know, what it has present, as I should say. And if it doesn't have what needs present, obviously there's going to be complications and issues. And so something to consider is your body doesn't produce any of these three things, fats, carbs, or proteins on its own and needs them present. And so again, we're not going to go into what should you do? What shouldn't you do right now? But just something to think about and consider when considering certain diets that restrict certain things. And, you know, I, I'm not going to, I think when we get there and we get into some of these deeper discussions about the specific diets and stuff, um, I can, you know, kind of play devil's advocate as well on both sides because there's reasons that people do it. And there's reasons that, you know, there's lots of science on both sides of things. And so it's not like people who are doing these certain diets or restricting certain things are uninformed. Um, it's just a matter of having an educated decision when you're making that decision. And so I want to help with that. I just want right now to educate. So just something to think about though. Your body doesn't produce any of these things on its own. Now, when we talk about um, fats, fats are used for energy mainly. That's their main role in the body. They're broken down into fatty acids. And when they're not used, if they're not used for energy, they end up being stored. Triglycerides is what it's called. And they are turned into fat tissue, essentially, that we carry on our bodies. And they'll be stored there until that energy is used. And so until you're in a calorie deficit, that fat store is just going to stay there and it's going to be waiting to be used. And then carbohydrates are broken down into glucose or sugar, which is then converted into glucose. And this is immediate energy that is used right away. It can still be stored in the liver and it will still ultimately be stored if it's not used, just like we said, it doesn't just disappear, but it's readily available to be used for just function, normal function every day. The, the energy that we need each day, your carbohydrates are going to be that main source of fuel. And so just things to, again, think about and consider when, if there's not carbs present, your body will use the fats. That's true. But your body will also use the fat stores as long as you're in a calorie deficit. As long as the amount of energy that you're burning each day is more than what you're consuming. Your body's going to start using those fat stores. Yes, it will use the carbohydrates up first, and then it will start tapping into those fat stores. Um, but something to think about if you don't have those carbohydrates present, it will tap into those fat stores sooner but then you will also need to rely on those for your source of energy. And so it's going to it's going to take some time to get to a point where, you know, you're going to have no energy for a bit where you're not having the immediate access of the carbs and it's not going to feel great. But it is something that people do, obviously. And what will happen is your body will um, produce something called keto bodies because you still need carbohydrates for brain function, especially that's one of the biggest things. And if you don't have them, it can't, your body doesn't use the fat. It's not like when with the energy where your body will use whichever one it has present, it actually will create these keto bodies to use in place of the carbohydrates and they will be used for energy. But again, things to think about and consider if you're still not getting enough uh, of the things that are necessary, then your body will start to use the protein and burn actual muscle tissue for um, energy. And so depending on, you know, also what your goals are, if you're, if you're wanting to 
lose fat and also have, you know, muscle readily available and not start burning into that muscle. There's things to consider. Having the carbs present helps with the muscle building. It's super important for muscle building. Um, if you're not concerned about, you know, muscle so much, then, you know, that's something to take into the equation and consideration. There's also, in my opinion, more to understand and to really be thinking through and researching anytime we're cutting out a certain nutrient or we're um, restricting certain things. I think it's it's important to be very particular. There's a lot of people who, you know, they don't want to track their calories. They don't want to count calories. They don't want, I just want to, again, it's, it's part of the, the mentality. I just want the results, right? Well, the interesting thing is you would be safer and better off if you're not going to pay close attention and you don't really want to be super on top of everything, you just kind of want to get the results. You'd be better off staying with a, a balanced diet. Get a balanced diet. Make sure you're getting all the nutrients. And if you're not going to pay close attention to the way things are affecting your body and all that, just stay balanced. That's, that's the safest bet, best way to go. And focus on portion control and watch the weight start to come off because it will still work. At, at, again, at the end of the day, Calories in versus calories out. That's how everybody will lose weight, whether they like walking, running, lifting weights, whatever it is. Okay. Now, um, if you're going to do a restrictive diet or you're going to do something that is maybe cutting a certain nutrient out and you need to replenish it with an, I think you need to be very careful with that and make sure whoever you're trusting with that is informed and is helping you with your specific needs. Because again, each person's different. And if you're not getting like coaching on this, I'd be very, very hesitant to just jump on some random person's uh, plan or recommendation. I think even more so, but it's ironic, and this is where I'm going with this, it's ironic because the reason people hop on a restrictive diet, like some of these ones that I'm not even specifically naming, is because they want the quick and easy. And yet, I would say if you're going to go that route, you should be more on top of everything. You should be tracking things even more closely, being more careful, more attentive. And so don't choose something like that if your goal is quick and easy. Yeah, it'll quickly cause weight loss. But that's, again, that's not reflective of overall health. And it's certainly not reflective of long-term sustainability. If anything, it's the opposite. And so just things to think about. Again, if you're wanting to go with the route that's just more lifelong, can fit in with my lifestyle, not super extreme, then a balanced option is the best one. Get each of the nutrients you need and still you can still focus on being a little healthier, getting a little better nutrients of each one, right? Focusing on the healthier foods. Sure. That's always good, no matter what. But at the end of the day, calories in versus calories out is what's going to dictate the weight. And if you lose weight or not, you could still be in a calorie surplus, like I said, doing a restrictive diet. So the reason a lot of times those diets work so well is because they do put you in an extreme calorie deficit because they're cutting out a lot of other things. It's more so what they're cutting out um, they're cutting out a lot of processed foods a lot of times, cutting out a lot of sugar a lot of the times. And if you do that while still eating all three macronutrients, you're going to see drastic results as well. And so it's just something to think about just because you see, oh, this person lost 40 pounds doing this. Well, sure, you could lose 40 pounds not doing that and doing something else too if you cut out those things. In your, and, and even if you don't cut out those things, but you're in a calorie deficit. And so again, it all comes down to what the calorie deficit is. I'm just saying the reason you get in that calorie deficit without even maybe knowing you're doing it is because of what's being cut out most times or because of what's being prescribed in the diet that is typically going to be probably a lot lower in calories. Um, sometimes it's not enough of other nutrients though. Sometimes it's also... You feel like you're starving, potentially. 
because you're not getting as many calories as you even could while still getting good res good results. Excuse me. So all that is to say, you could get results about a thousand different ways. You could lose a lot of weight about a thousand different ways as long as at the end of the day, you're in that calorie deficit. Now, if you don't want to pay attention to that and you're just like, I just want to lose the weight. I don't want to have to track calories. I don't want to have to. Okay. Again, it's doable. It's, it, it can happen. You're probably going to need either somebody customizing that plan for you then and telling you exactly what you need to do. Or I still would recommend going through this process that I'm going to show you in the next episode of figuring out, well, okay, it's still good to know what my calorie needs are and then get an idea. And I'll show you some ways to do this, but get an idea of what you're consuming each day on average, just so you have the, the information. And then you can, from there you go, okay, I need to cut back a little in this way or that way. And maybe you still don't have to track every single calorie to get those results. You could do restrictive if you want without going on some specific plan or diet that's cutting those things out. Um, you know, you could, you could do a restrictive diet yourself, but again, I get people need a program. People need accountability. Um, people need to spend money in order to feel that level of accountability. And so I get all that stuff. And that's again, where there's that appeal of, well, I'm going to hop on this program, that program. Saw people get a lot of results with this one. But we have to think about long term. What's going to work long term for you? And why would you not want something that takes into consideration all your desires and goes, okay, here's like the best of every world. This is the best option for somebody who, you know, wants to do this kind of exercise this many days a week and ideally would like to eat this types of food still keep this in their diet. This one's really important to me. Uh, I don't want to cut this out. Okay. We can see. Well, eh, it doesn't quite line up. You're going to have to either add a little bit of exercise here if you can, or you're going to have to cut back a little bit on this certain thing. Okay. We can make small tweaks and still get you somewhere. That's like, that's, that's still a lot more reasonable than some extreme overhaul. Or who knows, I've had this happen with clients where they think they have to do more than I end up showing them. It's like, well, no, actually you could work out one day less and you could eat this many more calories and you're still going to get the results you want. It's like, whoa, okay. Who, who doesn't want that, right? But you have to understand what your body needs. You have to understand what your needs are and you have to understand what things get the results so you can kind of do the math and go, okay, this amount of this and this amount of this is going to get me to here. And that's what I'm trying to show you. That's what I'm going to show you. And I, I don't expect you to know how to do all that right now. But you got two options, pretty much. <laughs> you can, well, I'll give you three options. You can keep listening and follow along as I keep unpacking these things. You can find other information in the meantime and, you know, hope it's true and accurate. <laughs> and one thing I would say is just think through what is being told to you or sold to you. Is it a quick, easy program that this person is just trying to push to everyone? Or are they thinking through your needs? Are they customizing to you? It's an important question to ask. Are they thinking about your long-term health? Because if not, that should raise some red flags and you should be kind of being hesitant to take that information. Um, and I'm not saying I have all the inf the right information. I should say, I'm not saying I have all the knowledge. I don't have all the information out there. I don't have all the knowledge. I don't, you know, a lot of these people are way more qualified in what they're talking about, but that doesn't mean that there's not some other potential things going on if one size fits all are being pushed. I just don't like that. It raises some major red flags for me because everybody should know that 
everyone is different. Everyone is unique. Every doctor knows that. Every nutritionist knows that. Every trainer knows that. So why would we ever tell thousands and millions of people, here's the one solution for everybody? It doesn't make any sense. And so, again, just be thinking through those things. And again, is it working? Is it working for people? Really? Because a lot of people are going on these types of things and these types of programs. And I'm not seeing a lot of long-term change, long-term results. Looking at our statistics, our numbers, it's not looking good. So it doesn't seem to be working. I think we need more individual care. You know, back in the old days, the doctors and the uh, the healthcare workers, they knew everybody personally. They knew them by name. And, and it was like everybody got individual care. Now it's just like you come in, here's here's the prescription. Here's the, And it's reactive, right? It's, oh, you got this going on here. Instead of, well, how can we avoid getting there? What changes can we make in your life to avoid getting there? And I'm not knocking on every person or every doctor or every uh, you know person in healthcare or every person in the fitness industry because there are a lot of great people who really care about people and want to help. And there's a lot of people who just are misinformed. They're kind of part of the, the system without even realizing what the issues are and they think they're helping people. And so... You know, I, I don't think everybody's out there just to get people. I don't think everybody's out there just to make money. I'm talking more big level, though, from the top down. Yeah, they're out there to make money. And they're going to market to the consumer partly what the consumer wants, their ideal. Hey, here's, here's the best thing that's going to fix all your problems, and it's super easy and quick. And here's here's where you can pay us. But is it long term? Is it actually healthy? Is it maintainable? Is it all these different questions have to be asked? So think through these things as you consider. Um, I don't even think I gave you all the options. I said you could go find other information. You could listen to this podcast. Or if you're like, I just want to get on this. I, I want results now. Well, you could schedule a call with me and we can talk. And, and maybe customized coaching is a good route for you. Maybe that's a good option where, hey, you know what? I don't I don't really care to learn all this information. I just want to be able to tell somebody, here's my ideals. Here's, here's how many days a week I could work out. Here's the type of exercise I'm okay with doing. And here's the foods I enjoy, blah, 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 all these things. And then kind of just tell me what to do and give me the accountability. Stay on top of me for making sure I'm getting the results and sticking with it. We could talk about that. That's that's very much an option for some, and it could be the right option for you. But I know it's not the right option for everybody. And so, you know, th- these are kind of your options, though. And so think through what what for you is going to be the thing that's going to help you get those results and stick with it long term. In the next episode, we're going to dive deeper into exact. I'm going to tell you exactly how to figure out for you what your calorie needs are each day. We're going to talk through that. We're going to talk through how to start some tactics and tips for implementing things to hit those calorie goals, whether or not that means tracking every calorie or not. For some people, that's the easy route. I just track what I do and I hit my calories each day and we're good to go. I have people who consistently do that every single day and they get amazing results. It's like super calculated results. It's it's just this is what's going to happen. It's the simple math. And as long as you do it, you're going to get the results. And for some people, that's maintainable and that's easy and that's the way they go. Some people, it's not. And so there are other options too, though. And so we're going to talk through some of those options. We're going to start getting into more of the um, unique things that each person can do, things that can work for you and how they affect that number, that calorie goal. Uh, things that you can add into your life, things you can take out of your life, things that you can do to start seeing those changes and seeing those results. Long-term things, not just quick, immediate fixes, not a specific product that's going to fix all your problems. It's figuring out for you a lifestyle that is going to work. And again, all the while, keeping in mind from episode one, go back and watch it if you need to, what are your 
big goals. What are the reasons you're doing this? What areas of life is it going to impact? Because if you don't have those things in mind and they're not in the front of your mind, you're not going to want to stick with it. You're not, you're going to get sick of it. Even if it's maintainable, even if it's not super extreme, it could be mundane. It's like, well, I forget why I'm doing this. And while maybe I don't hate it, maybe it's not the hardest thing, it's still easier not to, right? It's always easier just to be lazier to not do something. And so, you know, at some point it is on you. I, I've been very clear and careful to say that I don't think people are at fault fully for their health because of all the misinformation that's out there, because of the lack of availability for good help and sound nutritional advice sound and not only that just even the availability of things that are actually healthy right the availability of you know the the price tag to be healthy is crazy if you think that you have to have a gym membership or you have to have a personal trainer you have to buy this type of food or you have to it can be very expensive or oh, you have to use this supplement. But again, we can think through, okay, what does it look like for you? Are there ways around that? For some people, the cost isn't an issue. So that's the easier route for them. That's the better route for them. For some people, it's a big issue and it hinders them. But that doesn't mean you can't be healthy. Everybody can be healthy and have a healthy lifestyle. We just, again, need to figure out what does it look like for you? And I'm dedicated to helping you figure that out and I'm here and sticking with it. And we're going to continue along this. And I hope that it's helping you. Let me know if you've gotten any value or help at this point. And again, it's going to only get more practical and more helpful. And I hope that you'll start implementing some of the more practical steps as we go to see, ah, yes, this, this actually does work. And it works with my lifestyle. And I can stick with it in the long term. That's all we've got for today. Like I said, episode six will be getting more into depth. And so I hope that you will stick around for that next one. Subscribe if you haven't so that you don't miss the next episode when we get a little more practical. And I will see you in the next one. 